In this video, we will see how to implement NextAuth with Credentials Provider in Next.js new app directory. Let's start by creating a new Next.js project. Let's open this project in VS Code. Our next JS starter project is ready. Let's install next auth. Now we have to create an API route for next auth. First of all, we have to set up auth options. We can do that in this file or a separate file. I prefer doing that in a separate file. In this file, we will configure auth options with the credentials provider. We have to provide name, credentials object, and authorize function to credentials provider. In the credentials object, we need to specify the fields that will serve as input for authentication. We will specify the email and password as input fields for authentication. In the authorize function, we perform validation on the user provided credentials and return a user object if the credentials are correct, otherwise, we return null. Typically, we validate user provided credentials from our database. However, for the sake of simplicity, in this scenario, we will statically check the user provided credentials without performing any database operations. Now that we have finished configuring the auth options, let's proceed with setting up our API route for next auth. That concludes the configuration process for the API route of NextAuth. Now, let's proceed with setting up the necessary environment variables.
The next auth underscore secret environment variable is used to encrypt the next auth JWT and to hash email verification tokens. The next auth underscore URL environment variable represents the canonical URL of your website. During our current development phase, I will set the next auth underscore URL environment variable to my local host URL. However, in a production environment, it is recommended to set the next auth underscore URL to the corresponding production URL. Next, we need to create a provider to access next auth session data in the next JS client component. This component serves as a wrapper around the original session provider component provided by NextAuth. To ensure that Next.js renders this component only on the client side, we will annotate it as a client component using the use client directive. Now that our component is ready, let's wrap the root of our project with this component. Now, we are all set to perform authentication. Firstly, Let's remove the default code from the next JS starter page and eliminate any existing global styling. Now, let's see how to retrieve session data both server-side and client-side. To retrieve data on the server-side, we can utilize the getServerSession function provided by NextAuth. After calling get server session, we will check if the session is undefined. If the session is not defined, we will redirect the user to the login page using the redirect function provided by Next.js.
As you can see, I have been redirected to the login page since I was not authenticated. Now, let's proceed to authenticate using our static credentials and attempt to access the homepage. As you can see, we have successfully authenticated and can now access the protected homepage. Now, let's move on to see how to retrieve session data on the client side. Before proceeding, let's clear the cookies from the browser to ensure a clean state since we haven't implemented the sign out functionality yet. To retrieve the session on the client side, the first step is to mark this component as a client component. This can be done by using the use client directive. Once marked as a client component, we can utilize the use session hook. This hook allows us to access and utilize the session data within the client components of our application. To ensure that the session data is loaded and available, we have set the required parameter to true. This configuration allows NextAuth to automatically redirect the user to the login page if the session is not defined. As you can see, I have been redirected to the login page since I was not authenticated. Now, let's proceed to authenticate using our static credentials and attempt to access the homepage. As you can see, we have successfully authenticated and can now access the protected homepage. Now we have learned how to retrieve session data on both the server side and client side. By leveraging the get server session function on the server side and using the use session hook on the client side, we can access and utilize session information. That concludes this video tutorial. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you have any questions or suggestions, Please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. See you next time.